Hey everyone, this is Brian here from Massey's Main Entertainment, and we're back with our second uh, second of our series here. That what we're doing is called uh, "Was This Album Really That Awful or Was This Album Really That Good?" I am again joined by my buddies here, Rich, Rich Strickler, Brian, and Doc. Doc. Doc, thanks for joining, guys. Wave to everybody, I'll, both of our fans. Out there, both of them. <laughs> I'll put up a QR code for Rich's channel so you can check him out. Uh, Rich, Doc, and I are also part of the uh, committee for the Authentic Hall of fame rock and roll hall of fame and that's on rich's channel so please check that out rich and i do a cd exchange every friday with glenn kellaway uh randy nelson and the canadian stud muffin himself larry graves so be sure to also check those out those are really fun this week is going to be was this album really that good and today we're going to focus on an album that many consider great and that is carol king's tapestry um, the album was released in uh, 1971 on AM Records, considered an iconic soft rock uh, you know, pop classic, I would say. Really a masterpiece of uh, sonic um, songwriting, I think. It's a great storytelling stuff. The album yielded four Grammy nominations and appears on many top 10 lists, but it's also number 25 on Rolling Stone's most recent top 500 best albums of all time. The album spent 313 weeks. On the Billboard chart, second only to Doc. Oh, Dark Side, I guess. Dark Side of the Moon. Very good. <laughs> the album had uh, sold over th 30 million copies worldwide, mm -hmm. and it had three singles that were released from it. The number one single uh, that got to number one anyway, It's Too Late. And one single, You've Got a Friend, that did not chart for Carol, but went on to chart for a very good friend of hers, James Taylor. So um, I'm looking forward to this, guys. Um, I, as always, I'll keep the last word for myself on these videos, and then we'll kind of, you know, go back and forth a little bit. But, Rich, you're kind of our singer-songwriter guy, so I'm going to let you lead off this one. So take it away. Thank you very much. Well, in addition to all the accolades and uh, numbers you laid out, 15 weeks it was at number one of the Billboard chart mm -hmm. from June 19th of 71 through September. So that whole summer and into the fall it was at num number one position. It was preceded by Sticky Fingers, and uh, con uh, the, the album that took over the number one spot was Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story. Great bookends for that particular year. So th this was a monster song. Of course, Carole King, for those that don't know, wrote a lot of 60s hits for other people, including the Shirelles, the Drifters, the Chiffons, One Fine Day, the Monkees, Pleasant Valley Sunday. Aretha Franklin, a natural woman. Locomotion was her was an early hit. That was her babysitter, Little Eva, that had a number one song with that. So she was a songwriter with her husband, Jerry Goffin. And then uh, when the singer-songwriter movement developed in the late 60s, early 70s, her management decided, you know, maybe give it a shot, sing your own songs. That was the thing to do. So Carol King... Uh, jumped on board and followed the Bob Dylans and Joni Mitchells of the world. And of course, Neil Young was doing his thing. Crosby, Stills and Nash had not only uh, laid the groundwork for that movement, but, and then the ex Beatles all broke up. The Beatles broke up in 70. They all put albums out considered singer songwriter in a way, Paul McCartney's album, Lennon, Harrison, and the whole wave started, but Carol laid the groundwork and this particular album tapestry, which was, we're here to talk about, uh, is an exercise in songwriting, like you mentioned. Song structure, arrangement, uh, the craft of songwriting. That's what she specializes in. Uh, lyrically, musically, melodically. Her voice may be a little thin for some, but she's expressive. Uh, she hangs on the right notes. She's got blues and soul in her voice. Uh, the lyrics are intimate, straightforward, personal, very relatable. Uh, just a wonderful uh, combination of songs specifically the, the great lead-off track, I Feel the Earth Move with that piano. and uh, it, It's just a good way to start the album. Then she brings it down with So Far Away. Then the big hit, It's Too Late, which is a breakup song. Uh, it's Too Late, Baby, We Really Had a Chance to Make It and all that stuff. It, it's just a heartfelt rendition. Uh, the middle of the album is very good, too. All those, those songs were not singles. Uh, I, I enjoy all of them. There's only one song that I'm not a big fan of, and that's it's the title track, Tapestry, Tapestry, which comes near the end of the album. She's got two interpretations of uh, 
compositions that she had earlier. Uh, Aretha Franklin's You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman and the Shirelles Will You Love Me Tomorrow. Both solid, but the other artists did a, a better job with those songs, in my opinion. And, of course, uh, James Taylor would have a hit with You've Got a Friend in the same year here, 1971 which is more popular than Carol's. But Carol wrote the song, and she gives her own little interpretation of it as well, which is good. The, I like the rollicking tune, Smackwater Jack, at near the end of the album. Just uh, a blend of uh, melodic mix of romanticism, longing, hope. Uh, just wonderful songs. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up and say my three favorite songs on the album are number three is I Feel the Earth Move. Two, It's Too Late. Believe it or not, my favorite song is So Far Away, the uh, the slow ballad. I think it's beautifully written, composed, and sung, and uh, love everything about it. The score on the album for me, you guys sitting down? Okay. 9.5. Ooh. Huge. Sports in there. Eey. All right. Doc, what do you got? That's a tough one to follow up, eh? So uh, yeah. <laughs> 9.5. Woo. Um, when I would go on that, I like this album going in, so I'm not going to sugarcoat this on uh, what I think of it, stuff like this. But let's uh, do a deep dive on it, start listening to it in different ways, and really start to uh, pull things from it. And Rich has, has gone over some really good points here, I think. So this probably won't take me too long, probably in one sense. I wrote down like words that I associate it with the word, you know, because it's bluesy, it's it's groovy, it's uh, it's got a little bit of jazz undertone at certain times, and. You can almost see where it's a piano driven album, right? So it's um, everything starts with the piano, or there's a piano in it, and you know, like that, that Smack Jack song is like the uh, the grooviest, upbeat kind of uh, song in it. And I kind of agree with Rich Tapestry, the um, the song off the album Tapestry. You know, for all the great songs on the album, that might be the weakest album, song on the album, but it's still a pretty good song. So, right, and it's um, there is no filler on this album. This is um, uh, the singer-songwriter. Um, she speaks for women through her lyrics. She's a woman talking about women and all these other things. So it's, it's, it's an inspirational album, especially probably at this time as well. Yeah, well, it's 1971, man. Um, you're not hearing this from a woman, like not this all the way through, and this detailed and a lot of emotion behind the lyrics. I think are just maybe gets overlooked in some senses, man. It's really, really good. The, the, the deep dive in the lyrics is fantastic. Um, and you can almost see like just different feels throughout like the songs, like you know, I sense a little traffic in here, or you know, I even see like words like Jim Steinman and stuff like that later on would pull some things from you know, even a meatloaf vibe. And it sounds weird, but I've, I've, I've felt that on some songs where, especially in the piano parts, where he would pull something, I bet you he did. I wouldn't be surprised if this had an influence on him or other writers, and I'm sure it did throughout the whole thing. Uh, if I was to pull three from this one, man, this this album's fantastic. The, the, that's the long and the short of this. Um, I wouldn't harp on anything different than probably what Rich said, except the, the groovy piano, bluesy, soulful. She's got a great voice. I wish she probably she probably wishes she started singing earlier instead of writing songs for other people because she does have a pretty good voice. Yeah. Not the strongest, like Rich touched on, but still pretty smooth for her music, man. I'll say that. Uh, if I pull three, man, I don't know how I'd rank them, but you know, I feel the Earth move would be on my top three. Uh, it's too late, and I think the song "Beautiful" is exactly that. Man, that, that'd be my top three. Uh, nice. Yeah. nice. Well, I think um, be nine point two five, man. Nine point two five. Wow, Woo! You guys yeah. are putting a lot of pressure on me here. <laughs> yeah. I wanna... Well, okay, so I'm gonna start where I was two years ago, and when I listened, I listened to Tapestry twice back then. And this, I, I, it just maybe wasn't my vibe for some reason. I'm really not that, you know, kind of guy back then, you know, when I was first starting out listening to music a lot. So at that time, I only gave it a 7.25. So we're starting there. Okay. And now, now I've listened to it four times in less than a week. Wow. So I wanted, but the first time I listened to it, I didn't listen to it with lyrics. See, I just listened to it straight up. So it didn't make me feel that much better about it. But when I listened to it and followed the lyrics, it just had so much more impact. And I think yeah. it's because Carol is such a good songwriter. She, I mean, there's a reason that they call her the, the singer-songwriter's songwriter. 
mean, mm-hmm. because she is that she's really that talented. I think Doc, we mentioned on the side one time that I said I think she wrote like a hundred songs for other yeah. people. You know, and really it's not a bad gig. I, I can see, you know, that's where you make your money, obviously, is in the songwriting itself. And it's like, wow. So I, I really like the texture of the whole album. When you listen to it and you follow the lyrics, the texture feels really good about it. There's enough variation in, in, in the types of songs that are being put out, whether it's a little bit upbeat, a little bit jazzy, little bit piano driven stuff is is fantastic on any of that stuff. And and when she mixes it up quite nicely on it, it's not you know like you guys said. There's no filler in it, and and it's it's a it's 36 minutes, but it's a good 36 minutes. You know, th- she didn't mess around trying to put anything extra on there that was yeah. going to just you know drag it down that little bit of, uh, of time. Um, so I, you know, the second time around here, I'll give my songs that I really like first. I like "Beautiful" was my third favorite. I like "It's Too Late." Obviously, everybody loves that song. It's just so well written, so well constructed. "Smackwater Jack" is my favorite song on the album. <laughs> it's got a little bit more yeah. oomph to it, you know. And maybe that's what I was kind of looking for. I didn't go as high as you guys, but I gave it an eight point five on my second go around. Pretty which good. you know, for me and that type of music, that's a pretty high score for me. Very high. So Excellent. you know. Yeah. That's how I felt about it anyway. I mean, she's a really talented songwriter for sure. I and mean, she probably never had to worry about putting out a lot of albums, really. She was always going to, she could always just live off of that. Yeah. She was so good. I've, I've read a story about how she was so taken back to see Aretha Franklin go up on stage and do her song, you know, Natural Woman. She got up on stage and did it for her live. And, and Carol was just like absolutely blown away by that. And to think, you know, that, an icon like Aretha Franklin is doing your song. I can imagine what that would feel like for you as you're sitting in the crowd, what that must feel like. Yeah. You know, fantastic. You're on the mood, man. You feel fantastic with something like that. Cooking, man, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Well, I mean, the consensus here for sure is, is that, you know, yeah, the album really was that, was that good. And it's probably, if you average all of our scores together, I imagine it, it really is that great. Um, that they say that, that it is. I imagine our average score has got to be a nine, nine point two, somewhere in there yeah. for all three of us, which is you know really exceptional. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching this week. I mean, we're, we're going to continue this series. We had a lot of success with the first one with Hootie, yep. and so we're going to continue on. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing kind of a tandem one. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, an awful video where we'll be reviewing uh, Motley Crue's Kickstart My Heart from the uh, 1988, if I'm not mistaken. And then we're also going to be doing in this for the same week, we're also going to be uh, releasing Guns N' Roses, uh, Appetite for Destruction. Was it really that good? So I think that's that's two good albums to do in tandem together. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this week. Everybody take care out there and we'll see you next time on uh, was this album really that good or was that album really that awful? See you. Thank you.